storm is moving north. These pictures are from Tennessee, which felt the pain overnight. Meanwhile, another storm, Hurricane Irma, has now strengthened to a Category 3 out in the Atlantic. Jeff Berardelli is lead meteorologist of our West Palm Beach affiliate, WPEC, and joins us now with the latest on these storms. Um, Jeff, where is Harvey causing the most damage right now? Tennessee and Ohio Valley is producing a lot of heavy rain. You can see we have flood warnings out just to the north of Nashville and to the southwest of Lexington and Louisville. That's where the heaviest rain is, but now it's creeping into Cincinnati. We have heavy rain there, and it's also making its way towards the Pittsburgh area. Later today, we're concerned about this sector. It's hot here on the eastern side of the system, so there's the possibility of severe weather, maybe some isolated tornadoes as well. In fact, I am expecting to see some tornado warnings and tornadoes today in the Carolinas. Okay, now we know that Harvey was this major major flooding event in Texas. Are we expecting to see those types of, of floods anywhere um, in those areas on the green there? Yeah, nothing like that at all. I mean, there'll be another three to five inches. There could be okay. some isolated flash flooding, some pockets of flooding, three to five inches there and there. And also, the bigger threat right here is the severe weather. I think some tornadoes will pop up today in the Carolinas. This system has produced a tremendous amount of tornadoes, and it's likely to continue today, even though it's no longer a tropical storm or a tropical depression. By the way, that rain is going to move into the northeast as we head into the weekend. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, as far as when it starts to move north and away from the deep south, um, what kind of rain? events might we see? Well, it's going to be breezy, if not windy at times, and the rain's going to come down heavy at times, but it's going to be nothing like it was, obviously, along the Texas coast. This will continue to weaken a little bit, but here we are uh, this evening. You can see extensive rain all the way from the Ohio Valley uh, straight into the Richmond, Virginia area, and of course, the clouds will be thickening up, and it looks like a rainy day in Washington during the day on Saturday, but still dry in New York City, so that's the drier half of the week, and as we get into Sunday, showers, thunderstorms, rain at times heavy uh, in New York City, all the way out towards around Buffalo and moving into Boston as well. Here's the good news. As we head into Labor Day, mm -hmm. things start to clear out for New York City. But notice the heavy rain is probably in Boston through about Monday morning, late Sunday night. And then everybody starts to clear out during the day on uh, Labor Day. It's going to turn out to be a nice day. So uh, we're going to salvage half the weekend in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about this Hurricane Irma in the Atlantic? How strong will it get and where is it heading? Well, I think Irma is probably going to become a 4 it may even come close to becoming a Category 5. We have a lot of time to watch it because it's very far out east over the uh, east tropical Atlantic, but it's very well formed right now. This is what our computer models say. It's likely going to get up to Category 4 intensity. There are a couple who say it could flirt with Category 5, so it's going to be a strong one. And here's what we're thinking in terms of steering. High pressure is going to steer it basically straight towards the west until it gets just on the northeastern corner of Puerto Rico here, probably a, a couple hundred miles north of there. And then it has to make a decision. Will it continue west into the Bahamas? Some of our computer models say that's what will happen. Others say it's going to go a little bit closer to Bermuda. But if it's it's going to be going in this direction towards the U.S. East Coast. Everyone needs to watch it closely. The real question mark is how strong will this trough of low pressure or this blocking front be? And it's a little unclear right now. This is what our computer models say. Basically, it goes to the west-southwest and then eventually hooks to the northwest. The European model, which is our best model yesterday, had it moving into Key West. This is good news, at least for the Gulf of Mexico. Now the European model is to the east of the Bahamas, as you can see. And most of the computer models are to the east of the Bahamas. However, once it gets into this section, or the real question is, does it get pulled into the United States or New England? That's certainly a possibility. Or does it recurve out to sea? A little too early to tell. But certainly everybody should be watching this closely from Florida all the way up to Maine. Yeah, a lot could happen, though, as you say, in the next week. It, just in general, I mean, obviously Harvey is being described by some forecasters, Jeff, as unprecedented. But in general, how bad were we expecting this Atlantic hurricane season to be? Uh, you know, it's already been above normal mm. and, uh, in fact, way above normal. And we expect that to continue. Even behind Irma, there's likely to be another storm forming within about the next week or so. Uh, and the peak of hurricane season is around September 12th. Okay. And actually, Florida's most active part of hurricane season is October. So we have quite a ways to go, at least until the middle of October. That's when it really starts to quiet down. But hurricane season doesn't end until November 30th, which means I'm going to be busy until about <laughs> November 30th. Well, we appreciate your time. Jeff Berardelli from our Palm Beach affiliate. West hey guys, Guardian News here. Heads up update on Irma. It's uh, September 2nd at 828 Pacific Standard Time. I'm starting this off on the 3rd, which is tomorrow. 
and let's just go uh, let's go to the ninth you know what let's go to the eighth so the projections are still right where I was saying okay it's like it's gonna skim Florida hit Georgia dead on north south Carolina let's go to the 11th Now it's nowhere to be found. <laughs> Let's go to the tent. Now it's saying up in New York. Let's go to the ninth. There. Let's switch. Let's go to. Oh, no. Let's go to this one. And let's go to the 10th. Play with a couple more in the back. Let's try GFS. It's got it at New York. Europeans got it down here. Which that's what I'm showing on Windy as well. Exactly. Almost, bud. So like I was saying, we'll skim the eastern coast of Florida, hit Georgia, basically south and North Carolina as well, dead on. So, just a quick heads up on that. And uh, let's go to our other models. And we'll see you there. Being track of, including Irma with winds of 110, is a category two. For a while yesterday, it was up to Cat 3, but it's been going through kind of an eye wall replacement cycle. So, you know, we do think that it will strengthen back up again, perhaps later today. And yes, it is forecast to eventually become a Cat 4 as it rides the southern edge of a ridge of high pressure in the Atlantic. Look at the winds ramping up between Labor Day and Tuesday, back up to 125, and then perhaps a Cat 4 when it makes its closest approach to the islands here in the Northern Caribbean, including including the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico. So definitely it bears watching, not just for our friends in Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, but perhaps the United States, depending on the exact steering flow of Irma riding around that area of high pressure. But after this time, we're very not, you know, we're just not sure if it's going to make a direct impact, a landfall, or will it stay out to sea? Let's hope. At the peak of hurricane season, that's September 10th. So this should be when most of our activity is, statistically speaking, that's the case. And yeah, we have another one out there, a really strong storm for being that far out in the Atlantic. We don't normally see that. That's what has kind of our eyes popping a little bit. Uh, storms always are moving from east to west. They always kind of want to pull to the north, but they have this thing called a Bermuda high. It's a area of high pressure to the north of it, and that keeps on blocking the storm from moving towards the north like you would like to do. You gotta have a little weakness in that high, which is kind of a uh, low area of low pressure that comes in and counteracts that. Whether or not that happens or when that happens, determines how this storm pulls off towards the north. Statistically also, we would think these storms would stay out to sea and don't impact the U.S., but our models have not been able to get a very good handle of it. So in the short term, short term meaning say next five days, pulls off towards the west, I think kind of probably moving to the north of the Lesser Antilles, that yellow cone there, that's the official cone from the National Hurricane Center. Then what happens is uh, what we are not really sure of yet. We'll probably have a better idea, I would say by Monday or Tuesday, of what exactly at least get that cone more narrowed down. Does it go towards the southeast, say towards Florida or into the Carolinas, or go out to sea? And hopefully it goes out to sea. But I will tell you, we're probably maybe seven to ten days away if it impacted the U.S., so we have plenty of time to watch it. It also means plenty of time to prepare, and this would be probably the good weekend to do so across parts of the East Coast. Guys. Thank you, Rick.